Welcome to SVG TV News for Thursday, November 24th, 2022. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. Two years on, former Liat workers, Heron St. Vincent and the Grenadines, are still in the dark as to when they will be receiving their severance payment, even as their colleagues in Antigua and Barbuda, and more recently, those in St. Lucia, were offered payments. President of the SVG Liat Workers Union, Jeremiah Howard, says he has had no communication from local authorities as to whether the more than 47 workers in SVG would be paid, calling it an immoral act. not receive any servants' payments or any indication of such payments. In addition to this immoral and unfortunate circumstance, the pain is further compounded by the fact that we were not even able to have an audience with our Prime Minister who was the chairman of the shareholder governments at the time of collapse of the airline. Approximately six workers are still employed at Liat on a contractual basis to operate a very limited schedule at the Agal International Airport. Other workers have found alternative employment and some are still unemployed, unfortunately. We are resolute and committed to a resolution to this issue and we applaud all governments who found the humanity to represent their workers in this time of escalating costs of living. Howard said unions representing the workers across the region turned down an offer that included bonds which workers in St. Vincent and the Grenadines were not eligible to receive. The estimated um, severance pay for all the workers, which is about 43, is in the range of 1.1 million EC dollars. Um, the Antigua government offered 50%, but that was in bonds and um, there was an offer as well about for lands in Antigua which was very complicated for anyone outside of Antigua so that was rejected by all the unions basically including St. Vincent so we're still waiting. In July this year Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez had indicated that the workers would soon be paid some benefits stating that he had asked Antigua and Barbuda's Prime Minister Gaston Brown for the total sum of monies owed to SVG Liat workers to see what he can do. Four months later no word is forthcoming says the SVG Liat union rep. And in other news now we hear that Media personnel here this week got the opportunity to engage economist Kevin Hope, who provided them with a better understanding of SVG's economy. Analyzing the performance of the local tourism sector based on available data, Hope, who is also a development specialist, said that SVG tourism lags behind some neighboring islands but does have a positive outlook. We hear more in this report. We have an emerging sector in tourism. Right? We are not there yet. If you think of, if you're making comparison to any tourism destination, the numbers we're getting in stayover arrivals, in addition to cruise, is no way compared to our brothers and sisters in Grenada or St. Lucia. Fortunately, in 2017, or within recent time, within the last five years plus, we now have improved access at least for stay over or international but we have a situation where we now have create the linkage for arrivals but arrivals won't come unless you have a hotel room stop. Vincentian economist Kevin Hope. Hope says cruise tourism data shows an improvement except during the pandemic. We are still constrained by our infrastructure if we want to target cruise. On the other hand, if you want to target more stay over arrival, one could argue we still need more hotel room stock. I guess one of the best kept secret to my knowledge is one where we do have a lot of Airbnb that has contributed to the stock. And at least for a lot of return nationals and others, we were having some discussions recently. Folks are actually finding that those Airbnb are, are providing that type of accommodation that some people crave. Because it's actually in a community where you could be part and parcel and support community tourism. Analyzing the tourism data was just one of many areas covered during a two-day training session on financial and economic reporting for media personnel. The training, which was held at the University of the West Indies Open Campus, concluded on Tuesday, November 22nd.
I'm leaving here empowered and encouraged that the media is a better place to report on economic and financial matters that are of importance. I am indeed pleased with the turnout in terms of the print, the radio, the television media, and I'm really looking forward to see how we can deepen the engagement. I want to say a resounding thank you to UB Open Campus, who came on board as a partner, so that we can truly try to empower our media personnel with the kind of knowledge that they can do more investigative work. And I truly look forward to reading and listening. Larissa to Pugsley Kid, SVG TV News. And Minister of Agriculture, Sabota Caesar, says farmers across St. Vincent and the Grenadines has a lot more to benefit from in 2023. Speaking at a recent ceremony at the Lacqua Food Market to signal the start of the distribution process of some 40,000 sacks of urea received from Venezuela to assist farmers with their crops cultivation. Minister Caesar said he was informed at a meeting of cabinet recently by Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gunn that he was able to, su to successfully negotiate 10,000 sacks of fertilizers from Morocco and this will be in addition to other fertilizer which will be provided to farmers up to the end of this year. So as soon as you don't apply the urea, we're not letting go your hand. We're holding your hand because you're going to the promised land. The promised land is the promises I made since I became the Minister of Agriculture. It's the promises that we have made in manifestos over the years. It's the promises that you have heard from this government that we are not going to leave a single farmer behind. And this urea is the mountain, the first mountain. The second one, we are getting the 10,000 sacks of fertilizer from Morocco. And before the end of this year comes, we're supposed to get 3,500 sacks of fertilizer. And yesterday, the input warehouse called me and told me to come for the 3,500 sacks that I have down the park up. I need to come for them. So before the end of this year, in the hands of the farmers of this country, you won't only have 40,000 sacks of urea, but you would have 7,000 sacks of other type of manure, fertilizer, to be able to assist. Minister Caesar said he was also expect he also expected to submit a budget for 27 million dollars from the World Bank in support of farmers and fishers across SVG, which will include equipment to make cultivation much easier. Thanks to the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Agriculture, the Prime Minister of this country. $27 million will be placed in the hands of the farmers of this country and the fishers in 2023. Now, with all of that, because in the $27 million, you're going to get cutlasses, you're going to get scoop forks, water boots, pesticides, herbicides, we distributed 40 hand tractors from here a few weeks ago. And uh, we propose in the budget to buy 500 hand tractors. The young men and women say they want to use augers because they don't want to use the scoop. The auger is a machine you use to drill out the hole to plant the dash in. You go down two times, when you come up two times, no matter how tough it is. We are going to bring in these by the hundreds, weed eaters and the like. The agriculture minister said they will also be working on markets for local produce and noted that with the opening of Sandals Resort's schedule for January 2024, he has already received a correspondence from the management on the produce they will need to buy from the local market. They didn't only send to me what they wanted to buy. They said how many pounds of cucumbers they want in January, how many pounds of broccoli they want in February, how many pounds of English potato they want in March, how many pounds of carrots and onions they want in April for the entire year. It means that this is an excellent opportunity for us to increase 
production and productivity in the country. And you can't say that I didn't come and tell you a whole year and a month before the opening. Notice it you now. I wait until November 2023 to come and tell you, the people of Maraqua, that is next month that we're going to do this. I am here a whole year and a month. And what we are going to do... Caesar said that there are a lot of opportunities in SVG today for farmers and they should not put these opportunities to waste. Where else in CARICOM you have a Minister of Agriculture and a Ministry of Agriculture distributing 40,000 sacks of urea for free. And we need to thank the government of Venezuela for this. And we need to thank Almighty God for this blessing. We have had the issue with the thief men. And I want to address the thief men. Well, I want to send a message to the thief men. We have enough urea here for any thief man who wants to get into production and wants to change his ways. We at the ministry will find land for you to work. We will help you with the urea. We will buy your water boots. We will buy your cutlass. And we will invite you to meet him. CPO said the thief man not hearing me. You know, I am giving the thief man a last chance. <laughs> and uh, as Donna was said to me, there are some who have seen and come short, went into the activity, and they're coming out. Well, I want every single thief man to put down the bad ways we are doing and come and form a part of this. And a number of local banana farmers are said to be more equipped with the knowledge and skills to increase production of bananas up to 25 tons per hectare, which is the international average for production of banana plantations. This is through the three and a half year banana revitalization project, which started in June 2019, funded by the Taiwanese government and involved a huge number of persons, including 150 farmers, 20 team members, six extension officers from the Ministry of Agriculture and six technicians from the Taiwan Technical Mission. The project involves upgrading farmers' capability of managing their banana fields and improving the capacity of extension officers in the Ministry of Agriculture. Speaking at the closing ceremony today, Taiwan's ambassador to SVG, His Excellency Ambassador Peter Schill. Li Lang says the project is the beginning of a new phase of the banana industry in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Because as you just heard from Yi Yang, that all of you work tirelessly, work together for three and a half years. Now is the time for you to steer your own industry to another new page. And hopefully, by the hard working that we worked together in the past three and a half years, you now have the knowledge and capacity to continue your own farming of bananas. I can tell you that I've probably never been to your field, but every once in a while we got the bananas from your production, and I can tell you it tastes exactly like the bananas we had in Taiwan. Ambassador Lan says he hopes to continue working along with the Ministry of Agriculture on other projects for the benefits of farmers across SVG. Joint effort, although we are closing this project, doesn't mean that we no longer exist. The embassy is still here. We are still working with the Ministry of Agriculture. If you have any questions in the future, please don't hesitate to contact our um, technical mission. 
and I thank you very much for all the efforts put into it for the past three and a half years. Again, we look forward to see you again and work with you again in the near future. So addressing today's closing ceremony was Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Nurse Gittens Macmillan, who said that the ministry and by extension, the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines appreciate the assistance provided by the government and people of Taiwan for the revitalization of banana production in SVG. With all of that in mind, I wish to say thank you very much to the Republic of China, Taiwan, for assisting us in getting back some semblance of where we were. In the process, I am sure that the Banana Service Unit and all the other individuals who worked along with that particular team from Taiwan would have learned one or two new things. It's always difficult for us to accept things that are new. And we say this is the way we used to do it. And sometimes it's difficult to move. But we know that Jerry and his team had worked assiduously. Reflecting on the glory days of the local banana industry, P.S. Macmillan said its collapse resulted in hardship for many farmers in the rural communities, even and even a change in their living standards. And she is happy to see efforts are being made to revitalize the industry. That following the collapse of the banana regime, as we had known it with the Europeans, that for a number of individuals, especially rural farmers, there became a time of extreme difficulty. And we know in rural communities that meant a change in our living standards. If you're old as I am, you would remember that in the days when banana was the it thing, today Friday, no, tomorrow is Friday, sorry, that Kingston would be overrun with farmers. You'd see so much activities taking place there. And we never thought that a day would come when that would no longer be the case. And for some of us as farmers, we didn't make any, any sort of preparation otherwise, so that when that regime fell apart, our lives fell apart as well. And what I'm talking about, my parents were farmers. And so, with all of that in mind, we... A number of Vincentian writers and poets were awarded prizes when the University of the West Indies Open Campus SVG held its fourth annual Ellsworth Shakin and H. Nigel Thomas Fiction and Poetry Prize-Giving Ceremony on Wednesday, November 23, 2022. Co-founder and sponsor of the competition, Professor Nigel Thomas, congratulated the writers whose pieces were selected and encouraged the other participants to continue to enhance and upgrade their craft. Thomas added that a docent Vincent and Grenadines has a thriving oral tradition. There needs to be a song literary presence. He expressed his gratitude for the number of submissions for the poetry category and commended the writers for their excellent work. The winners of the fiction and poetry category were awarded monetary prizes for their pieces. They are in the poetry category first place Marlon Joseph for his piece Oppressed Masters of Compromise. Second, Africa Daniel on some early mornings Ma will walk the coconut cow cut the milk in stall. Third, Zena Lewis, Blood Sister. In the fiction category, first place was at Lee Kane Solen, Red Zone, second Marlon Joseph Charcoal from Hell, third Shanique Brown, The Secret is in the Sauce. Marlon Joseph received special mention for his piece, A Casket with Golden Sprangles. A 30-year-old local entrepreneur who learned a trade by working along with his father from a young age is encouraging other youngsters to do likewise. 
Shane Chillingham, who has practiced plumbing for over eight years, is now the chief executive officer of Trims Plumbing and Repairs. The young entrepreneur said that venturing off on his own was very hard, but over the last two years, he has seen some success. For the last eight plus years, I started working with my dad, and then I branched off and started my own business, which it was in 2020. Some of the services I offer, I offer installation, repairs, maintenance, whatever plumbing entails. Well, the journey started after I finished secondary school. I was home unemployed for a while. So my dad, the course that taught me the trade, the plumber by profession for many years, decided to, say, decided to take me to work with him. To be honest, when I now started, I was only going for the money. <laughs> because like I said, I was unemployed. But later on, I, did, I developed a passion for this thing because I really realized that, hey, I'm very good at this. While growing up, to be honest, I never really wanted to get my hands dirty. I wanted to be an accountant. <laughs> well, I see myself teaching plumbing. One of my goals for next year is to have a summer program for the youths whereby I pass on my skill to them. I plan to own a hardware. Persons can contact me on telephone number 492-7507 or 526-3865. Also on Facebook, you can log on to Trims Plumbing and Repairs and on Instagram, it's Trims That Plumbing. Trimingham is urging other youngsters to invest their time in learning a skill so that they can earn an honest income. Just like to advise the youths to find something that they are very passionate about, something that they are good at. Work hard, be disciplined, and always have a hunger for success. To the young business owners, entrepreneurs, I would just like to say, keep promoting your business because there's always someone out there who needs your product or your service. The young entrepreneur said he is hoping to see the government make skills training and vocational education mandatory in all secondary schools across the country. I would like to see that the government of Simmons and the Greenwoods make it mandatory that the skill is being taught at the secondary school level. The Police Cooperative Credit Union Limited has again partnered with the Royal St. Vincent and the Grandines Police Force to sponsor this year's Police Christmas Caroling Contest. Since 2012, the PCCU has been a major sponsor of this event. On Tuesday, November 22nd, the president of the PCCU, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Enville Williams, handed over a sponsorship check in the sum of $3,900 to the Commissioner of Police, Colin John, as a credit union contribution to this year's contest. During the handing over ceremony held in the police conference room at the police headquarters, ACP Williams stated that as part of the PCCU's corporate social responsibility, it is imperative that the institution gives back to the community that it serves. According to ACP Williams, sponsoring the Police Christmas Caroling Contest is just one of the many ways in which the PCCU seeks to execute its vision to be the premier final in financial institution in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The PCCU president noted that excluding 2021, this is the ninth year since the organization has been sponsoring the Police Christmas Caroling Contest, noting that they continue to do so because they have experienced and see the joy it has brought to the patrons who attend and the different groups that participate in it. In accepting the sponsorship check, Commissioner of Police Colin John expressed gratitude to the PCCU and commended the board and management of the organization for its generosity and partnership with the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force over the years. The commissioner also expressed optimism about the future undertakings of both organizations and stated that he is confident that the PCCU and the Royal St. Vincent and the Grandin's Police Force will continue to work together to realize tangible and mutually rewarding benefits to both organizations and their members.